welcome to this episode of Little Big Knits. My name is Selma. I can be found as Selma Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. And I'm coming to you from a rather overcast Ottawa here in Canada. We've had some really, really beautiful weather, but today is not a supremely beautiful day. Uh, but we are definitely in spring and it's been absolutely lovely. The last time I came to you was from Belgium uh, and I put together a vlog for you and I just wanted to thank you for all the uh, lovely comments and hello to those of you who live in, in Belgium. I hope you appreciated uh, the vlog of your country and or the two places that I was there that I was uh, that I visited. And um, I will answer a couple of questions that I had, mostly about packing, a little bit later on, because I had people commenting on the fact that I had taken um, only carry-on for almost three weeks. I think I was gone for 19 days in the end. So after Belgium, we went to Brussels, uh, we went to uh, London, and that's where I did a little bit of the vlog from, but I won't be showing you any footage from there. Um, it was very quick uh, work-wise. I didn't have time to really see a whole lot. Um, I did get to see Canada House, which is our embassy, and in, it is in Trafalgar Square. And it's a very beautiful building. So that was really nice uh, because we were, we were at the embassy. And uh, so today um, I'm going to share, well, I'm gonna share a little story with you, but I'll share some knitting as well. And then I thought I would share some of my Finland footage because after London, I went to Finland to visit family. A long overdue trip. It was a really great trip. And so I'll share some of that with you. Um, and two little things before we get started. First, we've got the Scrappy Stashy Mal. It's going on on Instagram with the hashtag Scrappy Stashy Mal. And when I can, I, I post finished objects um, in my stories. And But every post in Instagram is uh, valid for a prize entry once we get to the end of the year. Um, and uh, we also have the... Uh, Sorry, woo, feeling a little out of practice. Um, we also have a group on Ravelry in the Little Big Knits group. And in there, there's a thread for the Scrappy Stashy Mal. So you're welcome to go in, check out what other people are doing as well, and uh, chat and post progress or final pictures of your own works there. So Scrappy Stashy means that you are using leftovers from projects. So maybe you made a sweater and you have a skein left over, you use that to make a hat, that hat would qualify, or you're using stash that has been around for a long time, and a long time means pre-December um, 2020. So pre-2021, uh, essentially. I believe that's what I said, right? I'll have to go check my own rules. Um, so there's that thing. So feel free to join in if you are wanting to use up yarns that have been around for way too long or uh, leftovers from projects or bits and pieces that you have, uh, that is the make along for you. I'm certainly enjoying um, using older yarns as well as, as bits and bobs. So I'll be showing you a little bit about that. And then before we continue, one last thing this weekend is Knit City, Montreal. So what is it, the 20th and the 21st, I believe, the Saturday and the Sunday. I'll be going to uh, Knit City, Montreal with Mega of Skeins of Dreams and Mel of Mel Make Stuff. And uh, actually, Mega will be picking me up. She'll be coming here on Thursday and we'll be uh, driving together on Friday um, to Montreal. And uh, on Saturday, we'll be going to Knit City. And Saturday at two o'clock from two to three, we are going to find ourselves a spot in the lobby, uh, hopefully right outside Knit City, Montreal, but if not, somewhere uh, could be on another floor, um, where we will sit for an hour, have a coffee and knit, and um, be happy to say hello to people. So if, you want to drop by then please do so 
So I'm just going to tell you that I'm having a lovely cup of green tea out of this mug that my friend Ailey gave to me. So you'll know Ailey as the Thoughtful Knitter online and her podcast. And she sent me this beautiful, beautiful mug um, by Julia Smith Ceramics. And it's just lovely. And so I'm having a cup of tea in here. Now, before we go on, if you're on Instagram, you'll know that I had a little bit of a mishap recently, and I happen to have my arm in a cast. Um, it was uh, last Monday, whatever that day would have been in terms of, I think it was the 8th of May. I went out for a walk in the morning. I was chatting with a neighbor and we were walking with her two small kids and uh, it was a very distracting situation because one of the kids was on a scooter and we were just trying to make sure that she was safe. And I think I was looking back and talking to her and I stumbled and fell and fractured my wrist in two spots. One spot, um, not a big deal, but the other spot required surgery. So on the Wednesday I had surgery and I am now in this cast and I've got quite a bit of bruising on my arm that's just from the flowing that's coming down, the 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 uh, swelling that's coming down from the cast. But um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> next week I'll be going for, I think they'll be taking this off and putting something else on that could, that's removable and I'll be starting physiotherapy. Um, so this was an unfortunate um, occurrence, can we say? unfortunate for sure. Um, I'm already feeling a lot better. I can move my fingers quite nicely. I can even touch my pinky with my thumb. So that's feeling, it's feeling like, you know, I'm trying to like move it a bit every day. The doctor did say that I could do some crafting every day. So I've been trying to do a little bit of crochet and a little bit of knitting. Um, not too much though, because I do realize that afterwards it, it it does cause some pain. So I just do little bits and it seems to be okay. So as a result, I don't have as much knitting for you as I normally would. So today I'll be sharing some of my whips and also sharing my trip to Finland primarily and answering a couple of questions. So there you go. So needless to say, also Mega was very nice and kind and offered to drive me to Montreal because I can't really drive with this. I wouldn't dare drive, um, oh, certainly not a long distance. I haven't driven since this happened. Um, a, a fast move would really, would hurt it a lot. So I, I just haven't. Um, and I, yeah. So anyway, so um, all right, let's get on with the knitting part of it. I don't want to talk about this dumb arm anymore. <laughs> it's made me quite angry in some ways, but what can you do, right? It's just stuff that happens and um, it's a process and I'll be doing my physio activities very, very seriously because I'll be motivated to get my hand back in order so that I can knit. So I'm wearing today uh, an older knit. This is my anchor sweater. Uh, so her, I think it's her, was it her original that was made more at a, at a larger gauge? She also has a summer tee that's made at a very fine gauge. This is the other one. Um, and I made this using a butterfly cotton that my friend had brought back from, from, I think from Greece, um, that was a fingering weight. And I double stranded it with some leftover Holst Coast, which is a wool cotton blend um, with this. And I made this Anchors Tea and I made it with short sleeves. And uh, I've been wearing it a lot because I, I've got to wear short sleeves and it's long enough. I actually had some writing from the surgeon on my arm. <laughs> I guess pointing down to so they didn't make a mistake about where they were going to operate and it was it was in some sort of you know pretty intense marker so I couldn't wear anything shorter because it would show so I start I've been wearing this for the last few days and this is what I'm wearing today. <laughs> so um, in terms of makes I'm going to divide my makes into pre-Finland and post-Finland um, and uh, 
the first thing that I wanted to show you, and this was what I really, really hoped to finish at before I podcasted. And in fact, the day that I fell, I had planned, I was planning, okay, tonight I'll finish the second sleeve, and then tomorrow night I'll do the ribbing, and well, that did not happen. But I have been working on my second Corin cardigan. If you watch the um, Belgium episode, you'll know that I had started this, and when I was there, I think I was about here, about here on the body. This is all wrinkled because it's been smushed up in the bag. And I have since done a lot of it and I was on the second sleeve. And although I can knit a little bit, I don't, I haven't dared to pick this one up because I don't know, I just fear that I wouldn't be able to get the tension right on the lace. Um, and I also fear that, that when you're doing lace, your hands are moving in a little bit more different movements and I'm, I'm a little afraid of what it would feel like. So I haven't picked this up yet, but hopefully I will be able to soon and I will finish this off. I decided to do three quarter length sleeves on this one. Um, originally I was doing a V-neck and it's a V-neck still. Um, I was going to do a V-neck with short sleeves, but I decided I preferred three quarter length sleeves. So it's on the go, it'll be done soon I hope. And uh, once I finish that sleeve, I have the ribbing to do and I'll need to find buttons for this actually. So um, yeah, this is, this is work in progress. Number one, I was very motiv to finish it, motivated to finish it. I'm using Patton's Grace in their taupe colorway. I can't remember the number, was it 2021, I think? And um, yeah, it's just this sort of like taupey brown, gray brown color. And so far I've really enjoyed working with this. Now I have to say that this is the first time that I've worked on a cotton project where I've actually had my hands be a little bit upset by it. And I don't know if it's the combination of the cotton and the lace. Um, I've knit with cotton, I've knit with linen, I've knit with lots of plant fibers. If you've been around for a while, you know I love that. And I've never had problems, but my hands would get tired with this a little bit and a little sore. Um, so yeah, now I have no idea if, if my hands are going to be sore with other projects at this point, but, um, I'm definitely going to be finishing this no matter what was really, really looking forward to wearing this, this, this spring and summer. So as soon as I'm able to, this will get finished and worn with pride. So this is the Corin cardigan, which is a design by Rebecca Clo and the Crea Bea, also known as the Crea Bea. And Rebecca is just a designing dynamo these days and she's got uh, a lovely tee that has come out called the Tolsta. Um, it's a nice sort of like basic loose gauge raglan that you that is like a lovely blank canvas. And I've been thinking about that one as well as a lovely summer knit. So that's something that I've been working on. Something that I cast on before I left was a stripy, scrappy blanket. Now I think I have not made this wide enough personally, um, but I'm going with it anyway. It's, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a barely single, barely single twin bed size. I'm kind of thinking that I may have to do something to make it wider once I get to the end, but I'm just gonna keep on going because I'm enjoying this. So you may recall that I wanted to cast on a granny stripe blanket, but I seem to be intimidated by going back and forth. Well, this granny stripe blanket, um, there are three new techniques to me and it's so I've been very happy. First, uh, I actually happened to be chatting with Mega from the Skeins of Dreams and I was saying, I'm just, I just don't quite understand how to 
do the ends. And then something in the way that she explained it, it was just like a penny dropped. And I was like, oh, I get it. And I think that somehow that the, when you, when you're going in the round and you change rows, the same type of thing that you do there where you chain a certain number of, 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 um, of chains before you, you started, I thought it's the exact same thing on the end of the row. So I did a swatch and it worked really well. And I was like, okay, I think I can do this. And then in chatting with, uh, we were in a conversation, um, Mel mentioned doing a uh, foundation, oh darn, what was it called? I'm gonna have to put it down here. A foundation slip stitch or something like that. So rather than chaining and then starting the first row, you're kind of creating um, kind of like a base uh, for the crochet. And so I decided to look that up on YouTube and follow the instructions and I did that. So it creates kind of like um, a single crochet across that you're doing at the same time as you are um, adding on the number of chains that you want. Um, so I'll, I'll have put the name down here so that um, so that you can you can um, look it up yourself if you like. And actually, what I'll try to remember to do is link a video below the video that I watched that told me how to do it. So that was a great second technique that I learned on this. So I learned how to go back and forth. I learned that foundation chain, and then I also learned magic knot, which I've never done before. Um, and it's just such a great technique. I finally thought, okay, rather than all these we and weaving in all these ends, other people are doing it. So let me try this out. And it's such a great technique. I don't know why I didn't adopt it before this. Um, so yeah, so this has been a really great project in the sense that I am using up scraps and minis from my stash. There's some yarns here that I've used in projects, like this pink here is Martushka Knits yarns from that I used in my perfect crop top, my first perfect crop top. This gray is from my gray ranunculus. Uh, this minty green was in my exploration station. So there's lots of yarns in here that have memory. Some of them are minis that I've had or um, other leftovers. This peachy color here is what is the, the yarn from Whale Street that Mel gave me years ago that has been in so many projects. Um, and I still have a tiny little bobble. It's, it's the, 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 and it might just do another stripe, but I just decided to make sort of regular stripes at this point. So this has been a great project and I have actually been able to crochet with my arms. So I think when I came back from Europe, I was part way through this mauve and I have done little bits here and there and have gotten this far, this much done. So not a huge amount of progress, but really, really happy with that. And um, I was able to crochet before I could knit, but I don't, as I said, I don't do a huge amount at one time. So I'm using a prim crochet hook, three millimeter. Uh, I just, I really like the grip on these ones. And uh, it, this is in a Japanese rice bag at this point until it grows a lot that a friend gave me and made for me. So that is whip number two. Whip number three, I haven't worked on since I came home. Um, and it's in this bag that I made years ago with some lovely Scottish tartan, is the pillow. And I haven't knit on this since I came home because this was a project that already I found hard on my hands. But I think I hadn't shown you that I had gotten through this orange stripe. So I just wanted to show this to you. So here I am using three strands, if I remember correctly three strands of yarn. This is a whole bunch of Patton's Croy that I have. And in here, 
there is a strand of the Patton's Croy and a strand of a gray and a strand of the black. And I'll talk more in detail later on. And I think I'm using a four and a half millimeter needle or five. Gosh, I haven't looked at this in such a long time that I don't actually remember. But I am making a pillow for our sofa in the basement. There's a lot of uh, black and gray and orange down there. So this will be uh, really quite fitting. So once, I think I'm gonna have to wait a while, but I did wanna show you this progress because I don't even remember if I showed this to you last time or the time before when I was still in Canada. Um, so yeah, this, this I'll get to eventually, but I had hoped to have this done a little faster, but I will, I will get there. So those are three whips um, that I want to share with you. I actually have uh, a couple more, but I think that the before showing you the next whips, I will take you um, to Finland and share the, and then I'll share the whips and uh, yarns from there. So this first segment will be about my first day in Helsinki and meeting up with two lovely knitting friends. So I'll show you that and then I'll see you on the other side. Hello there. Welcome to Helsinki. I should say that to you and to me. I am very, very happy to be in Helsinki. Um, I arrived late last night and I am, it's almost midday, and I am going into the center of Helsinki to meet up with two friends. I'm very excited about this. I think you'll be happy to see them. And I am going to be meeting Annina from Anni Utinits, as well as Jana from Finnish Knitting Stories, unless something has prevented either of them from being uh, downtown, we are going to be meeting at Snurre, which is a well-known yarn shop in central Helsinki. So it's going to be about a 20-minute walk, 28-minute walk for me to get there. And I thought, what better way to move than with my two legs? So off I go, and uh, we'll see you when we get there. I just love these buildings, these older buildings with just the wonderful work that you can find at the top sometimes. I find that I always want to look up when I'm in a city. That's often where you see the most interesting things, <laughs> especially in older buildings where they've done beautiful stone work or tile work. And Helsinki is a mix of old and new. Um, and there's a lot of early, early 19th century um, art deco and some art nouveau as well. And I have to say, it just feels, it feels so familiar to me. So I really enjoy it. It is such a glorious day here, even though it's supposed to be only about 10 degrees. I am completely overdressed. I had to take my calera off and I've got my pink Stockholm slipover and I'm thinking, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to wear this all day. this I'm just all hot and sweaty right now but we are here at Snurre with Annina and Jana and we're gonna go in Snurre
Oh my gosh, this is way bigger than I expected it to be. Oh, oh. Hello, ladies. <laughs> Very easily, but so I can have a little unveiling. <laughs> Good idea. Mm -hmm. So it was an absolute delight to meet Anina and Yana. Uh, we had such a lovely time together and I'll, I'll just remember that day for a long time. I think it was, it was just so nice. We had such a good time together. And as you can see, we went to Snorre. And in Snorre, I only bought one thing. I actually wanted to go back to Snorre another time um, and I ended up getting there too late and it was closed. So I had thought about getting some, some gift yarns there, but that did not end up happening. But I knew that if I walked out of Snorre, I only really wanted one thing that I absolutely wanted to come out of Snorre with, and that was a skein of Lanitium Ex Machina. Uh, this is a dyer whose work I've been following for years. Uh, she used to be on Etsy and I loved her work and always thought, oh, I should order some, I should order some, I never did. And so they had a table of her work and I ended up getting this intense purple. So this is essentially my, my souvenir skein from Snorre. And um, yeah, we'll see when I cast on some socks. This is her basic sock too. Uh, it's a 75% superwash wool and 25% nylon with 420 meters in a skein. And this is called Butterfly Galaxies. So yeah, so I'm really, really happy to have come home with this. Before arriving uh, in Finland, I ordered some yarn. Um, oh dear, let me see. I ordered some yarn from Saye Wools. Sorry, I still have some here in some paper. I haven't taken it out because I haven't needed it. But I ordered four skeins of this wool here. Saye wool in the linen DK. So this is a 70% um, organic wool, a European wool, and 30% Belgian linen. Now, usually you'll see, you know, 10% linen, but I thought 30% linen. And I had actually seen this on the Nupu Nupu podcast because Maria had made a sweater using it. And when she talked about it, I immediately went to the website and I decided, okay, I, I need this. And so I got myself four of these blues, which on the website, I'm going to say looked a little brighter, um, but it's still a beautiful blue. And I bought um, a skein of what would be the cream. And actually, Annina, they were delivered to Annina's place and she brought them to me. So I started the DRK Everyday Sweater by Andrea Mowry. I had seen a striped version of that sweater on Ravelry and I decided, oh, that's what I need to make that sweater with. So in Finland, I couldn't wait. I cast on 
the DRK Everyday Sweater in these two colors. So I'm doing 12 rows of the blue and then two rows of the cream. And actually, this is something that I've been working on and I have knit maybe 10 rows in the last week. Um, and I, I have to take that quite slow. I put it on cables because I wanted to try it on to make sure it was looking good and it's looking great. I'm really quite in love with this and um, very anxious to get this done. So Anina brought these skeins for me and Anina also brought me a project bag that she made and this bag became an instant home for this sweater. So I'll just show it to you here. It's a really, really great bag. I love this handle has been so useful. <laughs> and it's just a really, really nice um, sort of canvas bag with these alpaca on them and it's a drawstring and they're lovely, lovely little wooden beads at the end of the drawstring. And it's lined with some simple white fabric, but it's just really great. It's a great size and this really is useful. So I have to say that if I make any more bags in the future, I'm going to keep this in mind because this is very, very, very useful to have this kind of a handle on there. Um, especially when you're traveling and grabbing things and going and stuff. So, so this was one of the, one of the cast ons that, well, yeah, actually one of the cast ons in Finland with uh, Finnish yarn. And I just, I'm very, very much in love with it. And this lovely gift from Anina. Anina also brought me a pair of socks and I have misplaced the, um, I've misplaced the um, the label for this, but she knit me a pair of socks. If you happen to watch Anina's podcast, you will have seen her talking about these socks. Uh, and then she gave them to me and I was just so thrilled. So I actually have worn them once uh, in Finland when it was a little cooler, I was wearing them one day. Um, and I'll put down the, the yarn here because I'm gonna have to find the yarn. I have to say that coming home from a trip, there's just so much to like reorganize and stuff. And then breaking my arm just kind of put me into this situation where I'm constantly thinking, where where have I put that thing? Where is that? And just, I'm just distracted and absent-minded. So, um, so yeah, so really, really lovely gifts from Annina. Then, Jana, if you happen to watch Jana of Finnish Knitting Stories, you will know that she has a new base and was recently knitting a bright pink lento and she brought me some bright pink lento yarn. Well, I'm not sure if I'll use it for a lento. I haven't quite decided. I actually felt like this could be a fun little cardigan -y bolero type thing, but I haven't quite decided. So this is this crazy lovely pink color uh, from Kettu Yarns, which is uh, Yana's, um, Yana's brand. And this is called Joy. And this is a new base that she has, which is, I can't remember now, what was it? It was 30% non-superwash merino and 70% silk. So this could be quite a nice light um, garment and I have not decided what I'm going to make with it yet and I actually she happened to post the other day that somebody was knitting with this yarn striping it with another yarn and I thought that could be super fun too so we'll see what this ends up becoming but um, yeah I actually thought oh a cute just a cute little cardigan could be really fun with this but so that's one thing that Yana brought the other thing I am now housing because I already cast it on. I knit this while I was in Finland. I haven't knit on it since, but I got this little pouch in Finland. Not really a sock bag, but it'll do. And in here, she had given me a skein of Yellow Villa. Yellow Villa is a Finnish, um, a Finnish dyer. 
and this is her Bassi sock yarn which is a 85% uh, finish wool and 15% nylon this would be a hand wash so it's an all a non superwash yarn and in Finland I didn't have access to a winder so I hand wound it and I bought myself some needles and cast on the Northern Comfort Socks by Donna of Roots and Rain. Um, and I was just, I'm doing a super long, super long cuff because I want to use as much of the yarn as possible and I, and I wanted to be able to fold it down. So I cast this on in Finland and was knitting on it here and there, but I didn't get very far. So it's just this one of a kind colorway that's got lovely mauves and yellow and a little bit of orangey kind of rust colors in it. So yeah, it's it's not the most ideal. Like I kind of have to shove that in. <laughs> it's not the ideal, but but I couldn't resist this bag when I saw it. Um, if you know anything about Finland, you know that the Moomins come from Finland and there are a whole series of ca characters. And this is, um, this is one of the characters. In English, she's known as Little Mai. In Finnish, she's known as Pikkumu. And so when I saw this, I was just like, yeah. And there's actually uh, Moomi here the main character. So yeah, so that is um, what I got from the girls. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about uh, a couple more of the acquisitions in Finland. I spent a lot of time with my aunt um, who's probably watching, so hello. I also found out that one of my cousins watches, so hello. Um, but my aunt, we were talking about sock yarns and she was saying that the Austerman Step Classic was her favorite uh, sock yarn and I was like you know I've never used that and it's not one that we see a lot in Canada and so she gave me this this skein um, so this is a German wool actually which is 75% superwash and 25% uh, polyamide but it also has aloe vera and jojoba oil and she was knitting a pair of socks and it really felt quite glorious and it seems to be hard wearing so I got this very neutral color that I could either make a pair of socks for myself or perhaps for Alejandro. So she gave that to me. And then you'll be seeing some footage from, um, from the trip uh, a little bit later on. But I also met up with Minna Sorbala, who is known as Finn Frost. Uh, she wasn't, she's not in Helsinki, but I went up to the north, to my aunt's home, actually. Uh, she lives in Oulu, and I knew that Minna lived there, so I got in touch with her and said, I'm coming to Oulu, would you like to get together? So we got together, and it was so lovely to meet her. We just had such a lovely time together. And Minna had brought some candies, which are really delicious, and we've been eating them. And... Um, and she also brought me a copy of a Taito magazine, which is a Finnish craft magazine. And in here, uh, this is the last edition from 2022. So it's number four from 2022. And in here, Minna has a pattern, uh, which she happened to be wearing when I met up with her. So yeah, so I've been enjoying sort of looking through this and um, I have been uh, practicing my finish as much as possible and trying to read a little bit here and there and just really enjoying this. So yeah, thank you so much for that, Minna. And then my aunt gave me um, the most recent copy of Novita magazine. There was this dress in here that I just really liked actually. Um, I thought it's actually a lovely shape. It could be quite nice on. Um, there was also this cardigan. So there were some lovely patterns in here. Um, so I thought I will bring it home and add it to my collection. And let's see 
what ends up happening. There's also this very, very pretty mohair cardigan. So the Novita, Novita produces this magazine, uh, I believe four times a year. And uh, of course, all the patterns use Novita yarns, but you can easily substitute them. So yeah, so those are my acquisitions. Now, before uh, we start the rest of the vlog, I wanted to mention a couple of things. First of all, uh, questions. I had people being amazed that I was going to be gone for almost three weeks with carry-on only. And I did wonder how I was going to do. So I thought I would tell you a little bit about that. And uh, so I had a question about how did, my, how did the carry-on work out and what did I do about shoes? <laughs> So I have to say, shoes was probably my biggest quandary um, because, you know, I needed something that could look nice. Um, I needed comfortable walking shoes and um, possibly even like little boots because it depended on how cold it was. So I ended up wearing, uh, bringing boots that I, I wear a lot that have a tiny bit of a heel on them. They're brown leather boots that I ankle boots that I love and I have a pair of wide leg jeans and they wide leg jeans just look a little better with a bit of a heel so I wore those on the trip and I packed a pair of um, walking shoes by Echo and I actually had my Vivaya flats I knew that my Vivaya flats which are these um, this is the Tamiya the ones and I've I've done a couple of collaborations with uh, with Vivaya um, I knew that these would be great for looking nice. I went out dancing uh, one night and this is what I wore to go out dancing. And the only thing about these is that they're not waterproof. So if the weather was going to be rainy, then I couldn't wear them. But they're so comfortable, I could spend my entire day in these. But I thought, I'll, and they don't take up a lot of space. They're washable. So I thought they're a good pair to bring with me. So I brought three pairs of shoes. and. As you'll know from the previous vlog, I brought um, some lightweight knits and, you know, it all worked out pretty well. My one dilemma uh, happened when I got to Finland and I was going north and the weather was going to be a lot cooler. It was clear that it was probably going to snow there and I had brought a, a light trench coat and I was worried about being cold. So in Helsinki, I ended up buying a light sort of, um, what do you call those, kind of quilted jackets. And I bought a thin merino sweater to have something a little extra. Um, and that was good. I ended up wearing that coat a lot because it cooled down. It was a little warmer when I first arrived and it cooled down. So, And it was actually something that I don't really have in my wardrobe. So I thought that's fine. And um, um, the sweater was a really lovely sweater as well, just a very simple merino sweater, and it was good as well. I ended up wearing that a little bit. But if it hadn't gotten cold, I would have been quite fine with my suitcase. I'm going to be honest, I was tired of those clothes by the time I got home, um, but it all worked out really well. And I think, I think the key is to think kind of like what are things that can go together with a variety of things um, that you can wear. Um, think all black or all blue or all brown in terms of coordinations. And um, I had a white blouse that I wear with my pink Stockholm slipover. That is a very easy care blouse. I washed it by hand one time. It doesn't get wrinkled. It's one of those anti-wrinkle things that, um, that I have. And um, it, it all worked out. Um, it's not my first time traveling with only carry on. We went with the kids to Italy in 2017 and we each just had a carry on for about, what did we do? How long were we gone? 10, 12 days, I would say. And um, it was fine. You know, you it's amazing. Uh, when I went to Mexico in November for work, I took only carry on and uh, it was fine for I was there for six days and that was easy peasy and it was all going to be warm. Right. So 
The one complicated thing with Finland was that I, uh, when I got there, I realized it was going to be a little cooler than I had anticipated. So I was worried about being cold, but it all worked out. Um, I ended up getting a second bag to come home because I ended up with uh, lots of extras, um, gifts and, and from that were given to me and things that I was buying for others. And I knew that I wanted to have an extra bag. I carried, I um, packed a little tiny duffel bag, but I realized that it was probably too small. So I ended up buying a bag there that was, you know, an easy peasy, not nothing too pricey kind of bag. Um, so if I hadn't bought gifts and received gifts, uh, my carry on would have been just fine. And um, I think it's a great way to go. I was very nervous about losing my suitcase. So I didn't want that to happen. Um, especially because I was going from one place to the next. And then the uh, other thing that I wanted to mention is that Unit Toronto, which is a shop in Toronto, um, that is owned by uh, Claudia Quintanilla. Now, Claudia Quintanilla, you may have even knit some of her things. She is a prolific designer and designs beautiful things. So uh, she did a collaboration with Line Magazine and published this stunning book for children's knits. This is called Making Memories. And Unit Toronto asked me if I was interested in, um, in, in this book and in knitting something from it and they would provide me with the yarn. And I said, I most certainly would. The timing was pretty perfect, except that with this, it makes things a little bit complicated. Um, but I have a colleague on my team who is about to have a baby, if it could be even today. Um, and I was like, I would really like to knit something and I was planning on knitting something. So I chose, um, I, I chose a cardigan from here, although there are actually two cardigans in here that I really like. I had not chose this one, but I think that this one could be quite nice as well. It's called the Florentina, but I had chosen, uh, I should have marked the pages before I spoke to you. I had chosen one from here called Luca uh, as a, well, this is actually for the hat, but the little boy is wearing the Luca cardigan. So I said, if you could send me something in kind of a green teal, and they sent me these two skeins of Superwash DK from Sweet Georgia. As I said, it has to be Superwash, has to be Easy Care. And uh, I'm, I, I have to say, I quite squealed when I saw this. I was like, oh, I'm, this is an exciting thing for me to work with because I've never, I, I'm, I've worked with a little bit of Sweet Georgia, but certainly never her DK. So I'm very excited about this. And I'll be casting on the Luca as soon as I feel like my hand is in, in better shape. But... This is an absolutely stunning publication. I'm really happy to have this because if there are more, um, I mean, there's a vest in here, people. If you know me, you know I love vests. Um, and that might be a second knit that I'll make for that little boy. But uh, there are absolutely beautiful, beautiful patterns in here just stunning like this here's another cardigan that's a striped cardigan um and it's a beautiful publication with just gorgeous gorgeous patterns but as you know line it always puts together um a beautiful publication that is quality paper and stunning photography and beautifully laid out and I think this is going to be a really great book for me to have any time I need to make something for a small person. Um, it'll be a good thing to have. So, yeah, that, that thank you so much for that, uh, Unit Toronto. Um, a really beautiful publication. I'm so happy to have it. Um, so, um, a couple of things before I leave you. Um, I have been thinking about starting a Nordic Cal. Um, and so in the next couple of weeks, I'll get myself organized and probably talk to you about that in the next episode. But just being in Finland has really inspired me to uh, knit with, I have many, many patterns from, from Finland in particular, 
um, with the contrast book by Mei Yu and the Kalevala book. Um, I want to knit the, knit the Lento, which is uh, designed by a Finnish designer. And I have, of course, this beautiful Finnish yarn. And I have some more Finnish yarn upstairs, uh, leftovers from my Silver Forest. So if you're interested in that, um, that will be coming up soon. It was actually something that was mentioned to me by uh, my friend Leah. And so, um, yeah, I'll be, if you're interested, start getting your, your thinking cap on about that. And um, next episode, I'll also answer a couple of questions that I've had about certain techniques and so forth. And hopefully I'll be able to finish my corn and be wearing that for you next time um, and, and show you some of the summer knits that I'm hoping to make. If summer isn't over by the time I'm able to knit well. So yeah, so I'm gonna leave you with footage from Finland. Um, and the rest of my trip was was very family oriented. It was very family centered. It was a it was an important trip for me. Actually, there was there's been some things happening in the family, and I just it had been a long time since I had been to Finland, um, and just been able to be there. I went in 2018 with my mother, but I was taking her to a funeral and. Um, my mother has dementia and needed a lot of care, so I was. It was, it was, it was very hectic. Um, we weren't there for a very long time, and then the time before that um, was also for a funeral. So I really hadn't been there in almost twenty years to just be there, and <clears throat> so that was really. It was really good, and I'm so so glad that I went. It was just really wonderful. I had never been to Finland in the spring and I had never been there for May Day, uh, which is known as Vappu in Finnish. And it's a big celebration in Finland. And as I said, I went out dancing and it was just, it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> um, and I didn't realize that already in the spring, the days are getting quite long. So it didn't get dark until about 9.30 at night already. Um, and it was just beautiful. It was just, uh, it was beautiful to be there, beautiful to be um, spending time with family and doing a little bit of walking around in Helsinki. And, um, and then I, as I said, I went to the north for a wee couple of days. So I'll be leaving, the, leaving you off with footage from the rest of my trip. Hope you enjoy. And um, next time you see me, there'll probably also be some footage from Knit City. So see you next time. I hope you're doing well. I hope this will be off next time I see you. And take care. Just.